it's different from country to country and even standardized data is not helping. That, that's the product for patients. If you, if you don't understand us, ask. It will give you a wrong prediction still. Okay, then maybe it can help us make better decisions. We can actually make most of the one, one screening. I would gladly come back. <laughs>
a small box that will help you make better decisions. It won't make decisions for you. It's not a replacement. It's a help that you decide how to, how to use it, right? So it's, it will speed up the process you don't like. Um, it will show you what are the most concerning parts. But still, you are at the very end of the decision process. We are just a, like a small pipeline. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, like you said, we hear these uh, words all the time. Mm -hmm. and they're like buzzwords right now. Even some investors don't look at some pitch decks if they don't see <laughs> these words in there, like yeah. even in future plans. But on the other hand, uh, there are not that many companies or startups that use AI and ML effectively right now. Like, for example, IBM Watson Health, such a good marketing and looks like not very good results. Yeah. Even, yeah. even doctors, uh, is there a quote, they call all the predictions made by Watson Health shitty. <laughs> So wow. why, why is this happening? Why AI and ML is not still effective in digital health? Yeah, I, I, I heard about IBM Health. Um, it was a huge project and I think, because I shortly work with IBM Watson as a NLP um, mm -hmm. system providers. Um, and, and it's really from the like specialist per per perspective, it's really awesome how, how, how it works. Um, but I think the main problem is the, the difference in, in communication is still a mistakes that we'll take that we speak from our perspective. We, we used to put all the boxes with algorithm, with papers. We still don't have a, like, a good connection. And I think as a part of our work in our team, we work closely with um, with specialists in gastroenteral s gastroenterology, um, and it takes time. And I think maybe that's the factor that it's not a simple solution to to like to connect that word, right? I would say it still takes time and procedures. Sometimes it's like for our like it's translating our needs. Like we need a specific. Um, let's say we need specific labels for for each each picture, right? Mm -hmm. And the the what specialist in the medical field will say it's it could be this and that diagnosis, but that's not our like uh, it's not our case. We need us for for our for machine to see. It's not to see a diagnosis to see a specific I don't know maybe pathology, maybe some changes in in tissue, but that's. That's another case. So I think we need to put more focus on the, like how to communicate stuff. Do you follow other uh, machine learning specialists around the world or companies or blogs that, <clears throat> that are really interesting? Uh, can you name some examples where you think really ML and AI is used effectively right now? Hmm. Hard to tell. <laughs> uh, I would say like I wouldn't mention specific um, specific influencers, uh, but I would say I like two areas of AI that I think it, are, it they are both very beneficial and they are both really like starting to roll in our community, and I think it they will make a huge impact soon. The first direction is data-driven AI, mm -hmm. which will, it's less about the, like the algorithm black box. It's more about what we put in the box because in, in machine learning, and I think more generally in AI, you, you, are, you have saying garbage in, garbage out. So if you put a wrong data, if you have biased data and you put it in like, even like godly, godly design and like polished um, algorithm, it still doesn't work. It will give you a wrong prediction still. So that's the one. The second one I would say is ethical AI. And I think it's, it is concerning for medical providers and for, for doctors all around the world because it's like, it's their job. They also have specific um, how to say it, regulations about that. So we also need to 
be aware in AI that it's not the I think the the time for only you know um, writing an algorithm and putting it into paper it's kind of like it's gonna uh, go into the into the other direction but between that and let's say business or between that and healthcare you still have a space for ethical AI. Do you think Another reason why maybe ML and DI is not that effective is the lack of really good data at the moment. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, I'll grab a small example from, from my experience as I uh, went through the change from the biomed- strictly biomedical field to computer science. The amount of information and how it's stored and presented in computer science and healthcare, it's a terrific change. Like, see, it's like searching for any information in the cafe, it's, it's very, very hard. You need to be a specialist. You need to have sometimes a network uh, to, of people to connect to. Uh, and so it's really scarce. So it's, it's different from country to country. And even standardized data, it's not helping that much as we thought it would be so it's i would say yeah it's like if you go with the data driven direction in that part it also help will help providers to have access to more stuff okay so let's get to biochem mm-hmm. uh if i understand correctly you started working in the company as a junior specialist then yeah. you love the company <laughs> and then you came yeah. back yeah How did it that was happen? I, uh it was mostly i i loved working with the, the the company the uh our mm, our ml lead it was fantastic work and it was like the pace that i like to change to like learn new things uh, awesome uh but we have a like smart disagreement in the personal matter so uh after that uh we reached to each other again and it was like the terms were very okay and i said like i would gladly come back <laughs> because the work itself is super awesome <laughs> so tell us more about the company and the product okay so uh i would i would divide it in like two two things again because <laughs> i think it's it's better to explain first thing is the capsule itself um, so we designed and manufactured this little thing that you can swallow and, and test in the um, capsule endoscopy. So it's this alternative to what we call a classic endoscopy, which is kind of like, it's not invasive, but it's not pleasant for a patient to have. Um, and it's, and because of that, the patient would like, not be um, that willing to, I don't know, go to a screening. Um, so that's the one thing we design electronics and, and all the stuff that you need to connect to this uh, whole wireless uh, additions and, uh, to, to that one. And the other part that I, um, that I am, I'm in with, with team and I'm in, it's um, machine learning. Uh, it's, it's like more AI stuff to help um, doctors to like see through the, like I will call it see through data and more because, uh, like faster because for, mm, usually for the classical endoscopy, you'll have, uh, I would say around, hopefully I'm, I'm right, well, around 20 hours of, of film of like to go through as a doctor you need to spend several hours to go through like the frame to frame to see if there is like uh, a change in the tissue a bleeding uh, anything that seems suspicious um, and it's also for like the small part but so if we can uh, catch with our uh, algorithm we can catch at like hot spots just to see and speed up the diagnosis if you see if you do an endoscopy f- to see where is or where's the bleeding mm-hmm. and you can actually see the bleeding like we our our, mm, our algorithm just said to you yeah, like there mm-hmm. that will save you a lot of time so basically a patient swallows the capsule yeah. uh, it's flows around inside a person for yeah. eight or 12 hours 
I think. And then the doctor gets some kind of resume of everything what happened. Uh, the doctor can see every frame. Like, as I said before, like the doctor ha has a power of like finding diagnosis, so I wouldn't hide. But we recommend the spots that will can be seen like in the first place, and maybe that will be. Uh, will be enough. So that's the that's the case. We're working on the on the uh, part where we can uh, see the exact frame where the capsule is now. So that's the that's the case. Maybe in, in the future we more sensor than seeing, but now it's like uh, the what we see for now. Is the the product right now is still in R and D phase, or is being used in hospitals already? Mm, we are in the pre-phase of clinical trials and the patients it are like the capsule itself was was already swollen and we saw how it works but it's still we wait for clinical trials uh to see if everything is all right and to be and ready to be uh certified as a product and as for ml we work um for in a part of grant to see it like to have it like executed to the specific accuracy and specific metrics that will tell not only us but the, the audience that we, we reached specific uh, milestone, specific level of, of certainty for the product. And because we consult a lot with specialists in the, in the field of gastroenterology, it, it was like, it makes sure that um, we work as doctors intended, not as we want to. Because that, that's the product for patients and for GPs, not for us, right? What level of accuracy are you aiming to? Oh, hopefully. <laughs> Depending. <laughs> not too much because it's pre-trained. But um, I would say like 90. But in, in the field of uh, healthcare, you need to remember that it's not the... It's the points, the probes that you get are not that important. It's like the thing, you cannot miss a thing. So it's better to like sometimes to aim for a lower accuracy and then to add a little bit of like certainty that you won't miss a patient that was like uh, have some kind of pathology and you missed him. So that, that was the like also concern we, we need to like take care of. All right, um, I've made a five minutes Google research <laughs> and find, found quite a bunch of competitors. What makes Biochem unique and what can kind of advantages uh, comparing to similar solutions? To say it straight for like from the beginning, it's not like the technology, like we invented technology, like capsule endoscopy is on the market for like 20 years now. It's but I would say like it's assuring, it's reassuring for patients. It's like it's nothing new. We'll try to put a, a like a whole trial on on that one. Uh, I would say like we aim for something that is patient friendly, that it can be widely used, it's easy to use, and it helps both patient and. Um, and gastro uh, gastrologists, right? So it's it's aiming for a I, I would call it like the wide wide picture for because usually and the the other thing that's the one and the other one is we are aiming for full intestine and not only for a small intestine, which is like the like the small part but if we can we we aim for like prolonging battery life and and making sure that we can actually make most of the one one screening so in the one screening you will have like stomach small intestine colon and then you have a full range of information about the patient not only the the small um small picture that you can have right now um so yeah that's the that's the goal and i think that's that's kind of unique Okay, uh, since you're still on the preclinical trials phase, mm -hmm. where do you get the data to um, create algorithms? Okay, so uh, we work 
with specialists that provide us a little bit of the data, but there are also an open uh, open source, I would say, I would call it a data called Classic Capsule. Uh, it's from uh, Nordic S Institute. It provides a, like a range of pathologies you can see, like mm, some ulcerous bleedings, a different kind of bleedings, even the like foreign body uh, in, in 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 the oral digest system. So that's that's so something. This database is completely free for everyone to use. Mm, yeah, you can you can check it online. So. Do you think it's enough data for you to to get to a good accuracy with it? Mm. I would say it's once again it's not about data it's about how clean is your data <laughs> it's how good the label it is it's how if, if it's if it's labeled for um for for your specific goals right mm -hmm. so that's that's the case I wouldn't say like it's enough but you need to like a power still a, a power of specialists in the field of healthcare um, to in medicine to to get the right thing because if you are you if you don't have special how to call it like specialist knowledge you're like up to no good with that one. Uh, another thing I want to talk about is um, the processes how everything works mm -hmm. in biochem. Um, can you give an example of how would you get a task from a manager or whoever? Uh, how would it sound like like to create an algorithm, to optimize an algorithm? Or what, how would the task sound like? Okay, I would say that you can go with two workflows. Like normally what you will see in, in many uh, IT of software uh, companies that you will have a manager, you have specific tasks in some, some runs, or if you work with Agile, there will be specific sprints. And then you just get a small, like uh, a chunk of, of, of wider um, project or bigger project. Um, and that's the, that's the one way uh, we work, but because we work in the R&D, uh, project it's it's different <laughs> it's maybe uh sometimes it's working on the level of we have the specific idea with like hey i found this specific paper and that specific solutions that can help us i found um that it may help in our case but it was done i don't know on different images on radiologists uh, radiology images and then you need to kind of take, make a prototype um, and that, uh, and, and check if it's worked for that case. And as for levels of like how, how the big task is, it depends. Sometimes it's if we work for labeling, sometimes it's make sure that we know what kind of uh, label data we have. So what kind of pathologies, I'd ask a doctor which one can we address first, which are the most common, and then present a little bit of like uh, overall view for, for all, 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 of, all the people in team. In team. Or it can be uh, implement those specific features we want to, to grab from the specific frame and then to see uh, and see how it, well it will classify your picture. So that's that's the case. Sometimes it will you some one person will like go to prepare the, your data, and the other say like, okay, I have a data and I can uh, work with the classification tasks. So implement the paper. How hard is to to estimate such a wide task and sometimes not very specific? It it, it is. Um, uh, a painful thing to do to to be just for both sides, right? To for researchers or for for developers we are working on now. So that's a clash of like at least three fields of the business that want to have a specific timelines and to developers that sometimes. <laughs> you can estimate it will take an hour, but you find something specific and it'll take two days. You sometimes it's like overwhelming, and still you have a uh, researchers that will, like sometimes it's it's hard to 
uh, you know, kind of make a specific task if you're researching something, right? Uh, so I would say I would say it's it's really hard task to do so. Um, usually we try to work with deadlines, uh, with like we try to deliver and try to set minimum value that we provide. So we kind of try to or uh, and as a as a minimal value, I will. I will describe it as, um, as, as as a box, let's say, as, as a kind of like a, like a part of the pipeline that need to be delivered for the person to work with, so, right? So so that's something like even if you want to work a little bit more to provide a better solution, like more precise, let's say, data pre-processing, give me a, a pre-processed data I can work with because I still need to 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 go with with my flow, so you will have a, like the small pipeline that will grow uh, over time. We're thinking about creating a startup on your own someday. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I feel like um, I would describe myself as a perfect sidekick. <laughs> So it's rather like in the role of society, but I'm, I'm happy to work with Biocam because we still have a lot to do in this field. And it's kind of, you know, it's a small field in the whole healthcare. So it's still, um, I, I like to, to, if I can work with something that is getting better and it's making people's better life, lives better, I'm fine. That's, that's really cool. Finally. Uh... Would you have any recommendations for a startup founder who decided, okay, I need to hire an ML specialist now for my mm -hmm. business? Do you have any kind of recommendations, like what, how to set the goals and expectations correctly, or how to build that uh, communication with the specialists right? Mm -hmm. uh, what would you recommend? I will go with team building, really. It's, it's that simple. Try to find a person that will feed into your team do you need uh some like um someone who will do almost everything but it'll, like will be specialist in the like if you want like dig into newest papers and see the like all the stuff maybe that's not the case maybe you need a more of the researcher maybe you need to find um because i think what we see now like there's some some few years ago, you you will have like machine learning, let's say specialist, or just machine learning developer, and that's it. Now you have a specialist that will like specialist that will work mostly with, uh, or researcher that will work mostly with algorithm. Very like very, I wouldn't say mathematical, but still inside the, the very specific thing you want to design. You will have an engineers, they like ML engineers that will build a scaffolding for all the knowledge that like your, your researchers will, will try to dig, dig out. Um, and then you have, if you want to go big and go to like really fully design the process, you need to, concern, to be concerned about machine learning uh, operations, so ML ops. Because that's that's also like you need to think about cloud systems. You need to think about continuous delivery, which is like continuous, um, continuously like going through the project product and delivering to the clients. So that's the one. Uh, and hmm, I don't know. It's it's tough. It's tough. I think some. It's like very personal what you need for your team and how to com com communicate. Um, be patient. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's hard because it's like I think so. Because try to connect both words. Like it, if you if you don't understand us, ask. We don't know when we talk jargon. We don't know it. We spent too many years, like in our small rooms, making something. Just ask. That would be great. <laughs> That's good. Uh, thank you, Amelia. I think that Thanks. was very interesting. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>